So you have your three sources and your notes attributed to them that you're going to be able to use and cite in your essay on your Revolutionary War hero or heroine. So my heroine was Polly Cooper, an Oneida tribeswoman uh, from upstate New York. Okay. So one of the things you should do again, when you take notes, always make sure you have the URL associated with your notes. That way it's really easy to go back and find all of the uh, citation information you're going to need later. So for this Molly Green, um, the lesser known patriots. So the things you're going to need are the author, AK Fielding. When you do a citation, you got to make sure that it's the last name first, comma, and then whatever their first name is. In this case, it was just initials. Then after that, you're going to have the title of the article, which in this case is top 10 lesser known patriots of the American Revolution. I'm going to be cop uh, I'm going to be lazy and if it lets me select it there we go. Uh, I'm going to copy it and in quotation marks, I'm going to paste it. And an ending quotation, ending quotation. And this is way too big, so I can reformat it, size 11, take the bold off. There we go. And then a period always follows the title. Then I can put the name of the website. Oh, it's mollygreen.com. Okay, so, uh, and if you're not quite sure what the name of the website is, oftentimes you can find it down whoever the website is copyrighted to. And it says full on mollygreen.com. So that's who our website name is and who our publisher is. Because they're the same, we only have to put it once, but we do have to put it in italics. So I accidentally hit the wrong button. There we go. So control I for italics, mollygreen.com. Okay, and then we end the italics and then we need to know, was there a publication date? Did she specifically post this? Sometimes if you don't know, you can't find it on blogs like this. They might even be up in the URL, uh, but since there's nothing there, it was at least updated in 2020. So we put 2020 because that's the most recent date of copyright update. So 2020 comma, then the URL. So we go back here, we copy our URL, we paste it, and then a period. Now, it used to be that you were required to put your access date if um, the MLA 8 isn't requiring that anymore, so I'm not so worried about that. Uh, but now you have your citations for your website, and I can actually go ahead and eliminate that, and then just have her notes be, the notes from that be right underneath of it. I don't really have a lot of information, so um, I might not even use it, anything here, because everything here is put available in the, my other two sources. Um, but when I visited my other sources, if I looked at it, there was no author. I didn't have anything here. I didn't have anything by the title. If I checked down at the bottom of the website, there was nobody's name specifically listed. So I'm not going to have an author. I'm only going to have, I. if you don't have the author, then you just skip to the title of the website, Polly Cooper Shawl. Testimonial testimony to the pact of, impact of the Revolutionary War. Um, this entry needs to end with a period before I then say, well, who who is the sponsor of the website? Who published it? So um, it says that it's copyrighted to the Oneida Indian Nation. So that would be the publisher sponsor, which happens to also be the name of the website because they're one and the same. I only have to write this once, Oneida Indian Nation. Oneida, oh, and in italics, Oneida Indian Nation. Now there is an option as well um, that you'll need to double check, but I have a copy of this citation right down here and I generated that at Purdue Owl. So if you Google M, oops, and home, home, MLA format, oh, <laughs> my, there we go, MLA format, 
and Purdue OWL, because it's Online Writing Lab, that's what OWL stands for. If you hit that, you can find out all of the formatting information that you need on what your essay needs to look like, how your different citations, how to do in-text citations, formatting, um, works cited pages, all of this stuff. Purdue OWL is amazing. And there's also this little helpful thing here that if you've researched from a website, you can get an MLA citation. And that's what I had done for the Polly Cooper shawl. So if I chose this one, this other one that I had done, if I copy it, paste it in there, and cite it, it then works through all the different elements. So it recognizes what elements it knows, what's missing, so that I could go back, visit the website, and see if I can fill in any of those missing elements. And then in just a second, we'll take a look at what the finished source look, cite, citation looks like. So as I was going through this, the one thing I noticed is I couldn't find a date on the website itself. I hate that there's ads on this. That's, that's not an, uh, an appealing image. Uh, but when I scrolled through this, I never found a date of publication. But if I looked up in the URL, oftentimes blogs have their date of publication in the, in the URL. So I'm going to go ahead and change this, get rid of the day, and then I'm going to say the fourth month is April. So April and 2014, because it says, it had said 2014, um, 04. So I'm going to change that. Uh, I have no other information. And so when I complete the citation, and then apparently I have to do a survey to get the free thing. So now it gives me the new citation that I've made. I can copy that. I can go back to my website. And that was for this one. So I'm going to make some space. Paste my new one. And adjust my formatting. Okay, so I have my citations. I know who I'm going to cite. I know what I'm going to put. Now I can go ahead and start writing. Uh, oh, here's this citation. I'm going to replace my other one. Ah. All right, so... I am prepared. Now I need to format my essay. Well, what does MLA say I need to do? Uh, oh, these are citations. I want the general format. So each one of our essays, here's just the overall formatting. Most of the times our, our stuff is already set up to that. Um, but in the upper left-hand corner, you need your name, your instructor's name, the course, and the date. And we need to make sure everything is in double spaced. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up. So from here on out, I need it double spaced. I go to the page uh, button that says line spacing, the up and down arrows, and I select double. So then I can type in my name, my instructor's name, the class, And then the date. And the date always goes the day, the month, and the year in academia. Then I need to have a title, okay? So, um, and this kind of gives the, the, the audience an idea of what they're going to be reading about. Generally, an idea of what the topic is. So I'm going to say Polly Cooper, a uh, woman... 
who forged on. Okay, so this is kind of a play on words because it dealt with the battle of Valley Forge and things like that. Um, so I'm going to actually make this start. Okay, so now the introduction needs to kind of set the scene. Who are we talking about and why? What's like going on at this time? So the topic is dealing with the American Revolution. Well, when I think of the American Revolution, I think of the American versus the British. But obviously, the Native Americans were also involved as well. So I'm going to kind of set the stage for that. Okay, when we think about the American Revolution, we generally only think about the British and colonial forces. These two were not the only ones participating in the fight. American Indians played a role as well. Without the involvement of the Oneida tribe during the winter of 1777, George Washington army might have fared far worse and the outcome of the war may have been different. Polly Cooper played a pivotal role in the survival and um, I mean they got stronger because of her so they not only um, their survival and um, ooh, success survival and success of Washington's army during this during the harsh winter at Valley Forge. Okay, so I have background information and then the main claim that my whole essay is going to describe is that Polly Cooper was amazing. So I make this statement, Polly Cooper played a pivotal role in the survival and success of Washington's army during the harsh winter at Valley Forge. Okay, so this is my thesis. This is the main claim that I am making. And then now that I've made this claim, I have to go and defend, well, how is this true? How was she so important? Okay, so um, an ill-equipped continental army led by George Washington was in terrible shape during the winter of 1777 in Valley Forge. Okay, um, and so this is heading, so now I'm going to be describing the Valley Forge and, and what happened with that, okay? So I found out about this, though, about them being in bad shape with this Polly Cooper women's history blog, because this one really goes in to describe um, what happened. So this is kind of a generalized statement. I really haven't, this is, this is a fact that I can find on numerous websites, so I don't have to specifically cite this. So I can say... Um, according to, and so this is where I can then do an in-text citation of saying, who's give, who am I borrowing information from? According to the article, Polly Cooper, to the article, Polly 
Cooper only one third of Washington's forces even had shoes, let alone proper um, uh, proper rations. Okay, and then what happened? So then the Oneida nation in New York heard about the trouble in, I believe um, Valley Forge was in Pennsylvania, so Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, okay? Heard about the trouble in Pennsylvania and rallied to help. The chief sent 40, so what did the, my notes say? 40 warriors and one woman, Polly Cooper, sent 40 warriors and Polly and, let's see, one woman, and I'll name who she is, Polly Cooper, along with 600 bushels of white corn to help supply the troops. All right, so who gave me that fact? Uh, again, it was here, but I had done my citation of the website because everything that follows comes from this one source. I don't then have to give another citation. If I were to have borrowed some stuff, so bringing hundreds of bushels of corn, um, so then all I can talk about how it was difficult to cook. So the second website kind of describes that. Okay, uh, the special preparations were needed to make the corn palatable. So, so Polly Cooper, oh, it helps if I spell it right. Polly Cooper showed the camp how to prepare the food. Uh, how to prepare the, I might want to adjust that later on. Um, okay, so I got this from this other website the Polly Cooper shawl. So I'm gonna go Polly Cooper shawl because I didn't have an author I give a brief version of the title, Polly Cooper shawl. And by having shawl, it helps me distinguish it from this other Polly Cooper website. Uh, and then I end the sentence with a period. The in-text citation goes in the sentence itself. So then I'm going to go on to describe how she stuck around even after the warriors left to help nurse um, the soldiers and keep them strong. I believe there's even a reference to her um, maybe even serving in the War of 1812. Here it says uh, she served again as a cook. Uh, uh, the... The oral sources, Oneida sources stories say that she served as a cook in 1812. So I might include that in there later on. So I go to describe again her importance and then I end with the conclusion, which is kind of where I give an overall summary, an overall idea, my overall statement impact that I want people to understand and my, my reflections on this topic. So the conclusion is going to be um, without Polly Cooper's aid, the, um, the war might have gone differently. The Oneida's generosity is rarely talked 
about and that should be remedied. Credit needs to be given to all people who made a difference. One woman helping to save an entire army um, is definitely worth celebrating. Her contributions have led to, so it talks about um, in the, I think it's, where's the one with the picture up here? Here we go. This one, there, there was, she was even inducted into the, um, oh, I have that in my notes up above. The, oh, right here from this Polly Cooper History of America, that in 2005 she was inducted into the Oneida Historical Society for her brave work. So I'm going to say that for, okay, I'm going to say her contributions led to her induction into the Oneida, oops, I spell it right. County Historical Society in 2005, okay? And because I have that element, I need to cite who that came from, and that came from the Polly Cooper Women's History blog. So what was my citation for that? Women's History blog. So it was just the Polly Cooper. Okay. Um, Polly... Cooper. Okay. Okay. I am so thankful. Okay. Well, I want to leave myself out of it. Uh, one, oh, not once woman, one woman. It's definitely worth celebrating. Okay. Credit needs to be given. Oh, actually, this should get moved up here. Credit needs to be given. She got the credit. And then I, this is my overall thought. One woman helping to save an entire army is definitely worth celebrating. So I'm going to cut this and paste it. There we go. So I have all of my proper citations. So then the next, the last thing is I, or I have all of my essay. We'll say, um, put this as unfinished and so now I have my in-text citations and I need to include then the full source citations for my audience to follow so to do that I hit control enter to start to create a page break so that my work cited is on its own page I then center it and go works cited enter down right to uh, go back to the left alignment and then I start grabbing my citations. I need to put these in alphabetical order. So fielding comes before P. So I'm going to copy my fielding. Copy. Paste. And I'm just using the shortcuts on my computer. Control C is copy. Control V is paste. And then I go to my next one. Polly Cooper shawl. Shawl comes after nothing, so Polly Cooper is next. And I can just copy. I can also do it by right-clicking on my mouse. And B, and then uh, Polly Cooper Shawl. So I have this. Copy. Enter. Right-click. Paste. Okay. Now everything here is so this these two I had already formatted in hanging indent this top one is not so I need to click up here and I'll see my margin arrows up at the top if you don't see a ruler you want to go to view and show ruler okay and so once you have this you're going to grab the arrow bring it over to half an inch and then grab the rectangle up at the top and drag it back over to the home oh I wasn't even in the right spot let's try that again I was just just practice um, there we go. Bring that over. So that controls the 
first line of a paragraph and then every line after in that same paragraph. So I get this hanging in dead stop. I'm then going to highlight it and go to double space. Now, if you notice, there's a little bit of an extra gap, I think, in between these. So one of the ways we can remove that is, oh, well, no, I guess, well, it looks like there's extra space there. I can hit delete and then enter. There we go. So sometimes if I just um, um, make this go to the previous line and then hit enter, all of my formatting is correct. And now there's even line spacing between all of those. So now that I finished with all of my notes, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all of that and delete it and then delete up. So now I have a properly formatted essay. I have a heading, I have my name. Let's see, actually there seems to be some extra space there. One of the things that can happen is it adds space between lines. So what you do is, because there's that's a lot of extra space, if you highlight it and then go to your line spacing, remove space before paragraph, remove space after paragraph, and then you get this cleaner double spaced look. There's not so much space in between. Um, there you go, so remove, there we go. So we don't want those gaps. So if we highlight it, remove space after, looks like it didn't work for that, let's try that again. There we go, remove space before, beautiful. Okay, well now I have this gap page. So I just delete so I don't have a wasted space. And now my essay is then immediately followed by my works cited, which is in a different page. Um, all of my facts that I provided, I have in-text citations, which lets my reader then be able to go down and find out who exactly I got my information from. Um, and I realized I didn't use fielding, so I either need to take that out or find a way to maybe cite it in that body. So I'll need to add that or take that reference out because it wasn't actually cited in here, so it doesn't need to be down here. But this gives you an understanding of how, how this essay should be written, how to do in-text citations, and then how to create the MLA citations afterward.